Christmas is God's promise of hope for all people in every need. Sickness, guilt, fear, pain, or loneliness. Christmas is God's promise of salvation for all people in their greatest need. So forgiveness from sin. Christmas is God's promise to give us his Holy Spirit's power so we can serve him and do his will. Christmas is God's promise of eternal life, gained for us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Christmas is God's rainbow promise to keep all of his promises. My dad was supposed to be home early to take me shopping for my friend's Christmas present. I've been waiting for almost an hour. Soon it'll be time for dinner, and then I'll have to do my homework, and then I'll have to do- Hey, don't you think you should give your dad a break? He does have to earn a living, and probably has a few other things on his mind. So he didn't keep his promise. Do you always keep your promises? 
Well, I didn't clean my room yesterday like I was supposed to. And I didn't help my sister with her math. But adults are supposed to be reliable. You just can't trust anyone these days to do what they say they're going to do. I get your message, but I can think of someone who always keeps his word. I'd sure like to meet him. I bet he's a great father, unlike my dad. Well, you're right about one thing. He's actually the best father, and everyone can trust him to do what he's promised. And oh. he loves us even when we don't keep our promises. Oh, I get it. You're talking about God. I forgot about him. Don't we all in busy times like around Christmas? I tell you what. I'm on my way to my church to practice for my Sunday school program. It just happens to be called Christmas is a Promise. I think it's just what we need to hear right now. Come on, let's go. Okay. Usually, when we see a rainbow, we remember God's promise to Noah after the great flood. But today, we're going to think of it as a Christmas rainbow. A ra yes. Usually, when we see a rainbow, we remember God's promise to Noah after the great flood. But today, we're going to think of it as a Christmas rainbow, a rainbow of promises that God makes to us through his son, Jesus, whose birthday we celebrate at Christmas.
In the beginning, God created a world that was perfect in every way. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. When God created the first people, he created them in his own image, which means that like God, they were without sin. But soon the fallen angel Satan, who had been cast out of God's kingdom, disguised himself as a snake and tempted Adam and Eve to disobey God. God had told them not to eat the fruit from the tree in the center of their garden, but Satan convinced them that if they tried it, they would be like God. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and ate the fruit. And God's perfect world was spoiled. Sin entered man's heart. Pain, sadness, sickness, and death came into being, and all people became separated from God. But God still loved Adam and Eve. And even as he sent them out of the garden, he promised one day to send a savior to make all believers right with God and to destroy the power of Satan, sin, and death. Adam and Eve lived and died in the hope of that promise. Eve's family grew, and many, of, many hundreds of years later, a man named Abraham was reminded of the promise God had made to Adam and Eve. God told Abraham that one day the Savior would be born into his family, and that through him all the nations of the world would be blessed. Abraham lived and died in the hope of that promise. Abraham's son, Isaac, had many children, and his great-great-grandson was a shepherd boy named David. He became the greatest king of Israel. David was God-fearing, but he was also a humble sinner. Nevertheless, God promised David that the Savior would be one of his descendants, and that through him, David's kingdom would last forever. David lived and died in the hope of that promise. And that promise was fulfilled, 
and it transformed the lives of those who trust in them as their savior. As God's children, we share the same hope that Adam and Eve, Abraham, David, and many other of God's people had. He has promised to be with us to help with every problem, no matter how big or small. He heals our sickness, he dries our tears, he bears our pain, and he loves and forgives us even when we fail to love him. And so we too can live and die in the hope of God's promise, fulfilled in Jesus. For thousands of years, God's people waited for the promised Savior, the Messiah. Finally, God's promise came to a young girl named Mary, who lived in Nazareth. The angel Gabriel told her that she had been chosen to be a mother of God's own son. The power of the Holy Spirit would come upon her, and God's promise to Adam and Eve, to Abraham, to David, and to us would be fulfilled through her son, Jesus. Here's how it happened. Caesar Augustus ordered that a census be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his hometown to register. So Joseph went from Nazareth to Bethlehem because he was of the family of David, and to register with Mary, who was expecting a child. And while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in soft cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
It was a silent night, but God wanted his wonderful gift to be made known to his people. So he gave the message to some shepherds and fields nearby in a very special way. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. The shepherds were terrified. But the angel said, Don't be afraid. I have good news. Tonight in Bethlehem, the Savior has been born. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Then a great company of angels appeared, praising God and singing. When the angels had gone into heaven, the shepherds hurried off to Bethlehem, where they found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. This child was no ordinary baby. He was at the same time the son of Mary and the son of God. He was both human and divine. He lived his life without sin in our place. He did the good and noble things for others that we failed to do. And finally, he let himself be hurt and to die on a cross, receiving the punishment we deserve for our sins. This child was the promised savior who gave up his life on the cross and came alive three days later to declare victory over sin, death, and the devil.
Because Jesus was to be the Savior for everyone in the world, God placed a special star in the sky when he was born. Some wise men from eastern lands saw it and were led by the Holy Spirit to follow it to Bethlehem, to the very place where Jesus was. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men went back to their own lands to tell the good news that the world savior had been born. And so that wonderful story sprout throughout the world and one day to you and to me. Through the Holy Spirit's power, we hear it and believe God's promises. That same power fills our hearts and minds so that we do the things that please God and say those to no to those that make him sad. Faith in Jesus brings us the Holy Spirit's power, and it is so great. It com just comes bubbling through in everything we do. Since God keeps all, all his promises, a bright rainbow of promises, he wants us to be his promise to others by helping, encouraging, showing respect, sharing, praying, worshiping, giving, and telling others the good news about Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit's power, we can be God's promise to others.
Yes, we can be anything God wants us to be through the Holy Spirit's power. And because God kept his promise to send a Savior who lived perfectly, who died for our sins, and who came alive again, we also have the promise that one day we will have eternal life with God in heaven. So with great joy, we remember that Christmas is not just a sweet story about a little baby, not just party time, and not just an excuse to get lots of presents. Christmas is remembering God's rainbow of promises to us, the promises of hope, of salvation, of the Holy Spirit's power, and of eternal life. If we thankfully remember those promises, God will help us to be his promise to everyone we meet. about God and how he always keeps his promises. Christmas is the perfect time to remember and appreciate what God does for us and to ask him to fill our minds and hearts with his love. And to ask him to help us be his promise to others. We can be God's promise by helping others in our family and community. We can be God's promise by encouraging those who are downhearted. We can be God's promise by respecting our classmates, teachers, parents, and other adults. We can be God's promise by sharing money, food, or time with those who are less fortunate. We can be God's promise by praying for those who need God's help. We can be God's promise by worshiping God and singing praises to him. We can be God's promise by giving to others out of love. We can be God's promise by telling others the good news about Jesus.